<laughs> Gaz, Jordan Rips here, coming at you with another Spire Side chat. Today I want to talk about Backstab. Backstab is an uncommon for silent, costs zero energy. It's innate, which means that it starts each combat in your hand, and it exhausts, so when you play it, it's gone for the rest of the fight. And all it does is deal 11 damage. So zero energy for 11 damage. You play this on turn one, usually and then it's gone for the rest of the fight. Is this a good card? Is it a bad card? I think it's a pretty good card. Let me uh, sort of set the scene for, for why this is a good card for you. Um, Silent has the ability to do long-term scaling large amounts of damage for boss fights. That ability comes from powers, largely. Unless you're playing a Catalyst Poison deck, you're getting long-term scaling damage a lot of the time from something like Noxious Fumes, from something like a Thousand Cuts. I mean, this is linear scaling, but it just deals a truckload of damage and gets you there. Uh, even powers like Invenom can do a decent amount of damage. Caltrops is also linear scaling, but if you get like six powers into your deck like Caltrops, and then go fight the time eater or whatever you're going to be dealing a ton of damage in the second half of the fight once your powers are deployed and that should be able to get the enemy killed so the problem with this source of damage is it's too slow to be super useful for hallway fights and it's too slow to be useful at all for elite fights pretty much unless you're fighting very specific elites if you're relying on these forms of damage to be your damage for fights, you're gonna like die. <laughs> you just, it's just not very, not very fast damage. Unless you have incredibly good mitigation, this is not gonna be fast enough to kill the tougher fights in the game. It won't be fast enough to kill the easy fights in the game without taking a bit of damage from them. So, there are ways to find damage early on in a fight for Silent. And I'm, I'm simplifying, of course. There are other ways to get long-term long damage as well. Like, you can play with Finisher and set up Pendib combos. You can get a Relic like Shuriken to scale damage off Relics, etc. But this is like a, a general common way that Silent can end up getting enough damage for the Act 3 boss fight. How do you get enough damage for hallway fights and stuff like that if you're going to do that? Well, there are cards like Skewer which let you just deal damage off one card, and, and that's something. There are also a bunch of like fairly strong attacks in Silent. Something like Endless Agony, this is just a pretty strong attack. It deals eight damage and exhausts itself, basically, for zero energy. Um, you know, Blade Dance deals some damage. Something like Slice is fine in Act 1, zero energy, five damage. Dagger Sprays, great AoE damage, upgrades to deal 12 to all enemies. It's cool and in a lot of runs you do have to load your deck up with enough cards like this to defeat act one and act two elites and act one and act two hallway fights um especially in the second half of the acts often the hallway fights are almost as dangerous as the elite fights and sometimes actually more dangerous than the elite fights so you do need cards like this to be able to deal damage a lot of the time to silent the problem is so you get to the act three boss right or maybe you don't actually get that far because of this problem but you get somewhere and you show up and you got this deck and you're like okay i'm going to deploy these powers to deal long-term scaling damage to you and then you also have like five semi-dead draws for the fight like drawing slice in that fight just doesn't do very much drawing dagger spray in the fight doesn't do very much um the powers are the things which are doing so much more damage than these cards are going to do. And so you have to block somehow. And you've just got too many cards in your deck, which are uh, in charge of doing something other than blocking, unfortunately. So because of this, I think having... There are just so many things which are right about Backstab. Um, it's a card which comes into play on turn one which is perfect for like the first half of the game. You really want this card in turn one. It's dealing 11 damage, just that front load of damage that you need to get through hallway fights and elite fights, and that's great. It's actually a valuable upgrade in my opinion, up to 15 damage. That extra four damage on turn one is a big deal for a lot of the game. And if you can get an upgraded backstab early, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. 
um, a really big thing is that it exhausts itself after you play it. And so, turn 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you're not seeing this card again, which is good. That's excellent because when you get to those boss fights, the really long fights where you need to like deploy some sort of scaling damage for the enemy likely, and then you need to block a bunch, you don't draw a card which only has damage written on it. You don't ever risk fighting against the automaton and having him hyperbeam you for 58 and drawing a hand of five backstabs instead of five cards that have block on them because backstab exhausted itself on turn one. You never have to worry about drawing it on a turn where you need to mitigate again. It's also just great damage for its cost, obviously, zero cost. And the Silent has seven cards in her starting hand on turn one. The Silent has... The Ring of the Snake at the start of each combat, draw two additional cards. So the fact that it costs zero in your turn on hand is very nice. Generally speaking, you're not going to be playing every card in your turn one hand. So having one that costs zero is often going to be just an extra card that you can play, an extra 11 damage. So Backstab is very strong. Uh, I think that the other cards which exhaust, like Endless Agony, uh, eight damage for zero energy, and it exhausts. Uh, die, 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 13 damage to all enemies, and this exhausts. I think these cards are generally pretty strong, too, for the same reasons. But the fact that Backstab shows up in your turn one hand and costs zero energy in your turn one hand sort of pushes it over the edge for me. Silent can end up playing a turn one sort of strategy. Um, there are powers in this deck which become innate after image becomes innate. So it's always going to show up in your turn one hand. Uh, Infinite Blades becomes innate, so that will always show up in your turn one hand. So you can end up crafting very particular turn ones in silent decks, and Backstab will often be a valuable part of those turn ones, in my experience. Uh, okay. Uh, bottling Finisher is maybe the coolest thing that you can do with the deck with a Backstab in it. Bottle Finisher and Deal. You know, 80 damage on turn one. So, yeah. That's all cool. There's there's one thing else that I want to say about Backstab, and this is going to be a fairly lengthy tangent, and I'll probably expand on this in another video at another time. But Backstab is definitely a strong silent card. It's, it's a card that's focused more on the first half of the game than the second half of the game, so I'm not going to be super excited about adding it to my deck in the second half of the game, for sure, but... In fact, I generally will not add it to my deck in the second half of the game unless there's some unique reason to. It's a very strong card in the first half of the game. Um, Silent Starter Relic isn't that strong, abstractly. You draw two cards at the start of each combat. This is this effect is duplicated in Bag of Preparation. At the start of each combat, draw two additional cards. Is it actually the same words? Yeah, it's, it's the same words. So that's, that's a common relic. Bag of Preparation is a good relic, um, but... It's not an incredible relic. Uh, Silence starting relic is nowhere near as strong as Ironclad starting relic, in my opinion. And because of that, somewhat frequently, you can benefit from trading in Silence starting relic at the whale. There, every time that you get a whale bonus, the fourth option always offers you the chance to trade your starting relic in for a random boss relic. And so, this is Ironclad only, this is Ironclad only, this is Ironclad only, so there are... These are rows of 10, so there are 17 possible relics that you can end up if you end up with if you do this. And I think the majority of them are pretty clear improvements over the silent starting relic. You do have to, you know, sometimes play a run where you get a calling bell with bad curses. Um, sometimes you have to play a run with runic pyramid, which can be really bad with your uh, starter deck for sure, unless you get good cards to go with it. But in my experience, like Pandora's Box is an upgrade, in my opinion. Ari is an upgrade, in my opinion. All the energy relics are upgrades. Sneko Eye is an upgrade. Um, I don't know about Tiny House. Tiny House might be an upgrade, to be honest. So, in general, if there isn't a strong... Um, if there isn't a strong other option in the other three for my silent runs... And I look at the map, and it seems like I would get clear benefit out of a much stronger boss relic in place of my starter relic. So, like, if there's a path with 
several elite fights I could do, which looks like it would be difficult to do with my starter relic. And there's a path which I can fall back on if I get a bad relic. Like, if I get Calling Bell, it's not going to instantly kill me. I can see that I have a path with, like, a few campfires and a store or two to remove curses. Um, trading in my starter relic becomes a pretty high priority. And two things happen um, when you do that. One is that Backstab goes massively down in value. And... <laughs> That's because uh, you only have a five card starting hand now. So often the fact that it costs zero doesn't actually do anything. It's um, it's just an attack for 11 damage, which exhausts itself on turn one, which honestly isn't that bad, but it's a hell of a lot worse. The other thing is though that Masterful Stab sort of fills in its spot. Can only be played if there are no other cards in your hand, deal 15 damage. I've made an entire video on Masterful Stab and I mean, it's not like a card that I I love, love, love and always want to have. But I wanted, I wanted to point out that if you do trade Boss Relic, and I think that you should be trading Boss Relic on Silent a decent chunk of the time, I think I do it about 20% of the time or something right now. And it's been trending upward, I believe, as I play more. I've been doing it more and more. Um, backstab goes massively down in value, and something like Masterful Stab can actually exist to do a sort of similar thing. Um, just a high damage, uh, high damage zero cost card, which you can get yourself to play a decent amount of the time. Okay. So yeah, in general, Backstab is like one of my top 10 priority silent cards for Act 1. I'll pick it over basically all the cards in the game in Act 1, with the exception of super, super broken powers and stuff like that. And even then, that's only if I don't need extra damage to survive an elite fight that I'm going to go to. And then it becomes significantly less relevant later on in the game when your damage just isn't coming from attacks anymore. But it is a definite blessing to have your damage from attacks in the early game come from a card which exhausts itself and gets out of your deck so that you don't have to, you know, draw through it over and over and over again as you're playing a deck in a boss fight or something like that. So, backstab. Good card. This probably isn't a huge surprise to people, but hopefully explaining how I'm thinking about the damage it provides and when it's valuable and why it's valuable helps you sort of frame it and understand um, where I'm coming from and how I'm thinking about silence damage evolving over the course of a run. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll uh, be back tomorrow with another Spire Side chat. I have links to... Uh, Discord and Twitch and stuff like that below the video if you want to come say hi and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.